So now in this video, we're gonna look at the Zener diode. And usually it's schematic, either looks like this or like that. So it's like a regular diode, except for the cathode side has a couple extra lines that kind of resemble Z's. So that makes it a little easier to remember that it is a Zener diode. And this is how it's usually used in a circuit. So a rectifier diode, in this case, would be blocking all the power supply voltage, you would not want to raise it high enough for it to start going through a rectifier diode. The Zener diode, however, while it is reverse bias, has a Zener voltage. So we're going to look at a 5.1 volt Zener diode. They use the V in place of a decimal point because as you can see it's a bit hard to read this writing. You would probably no, uh, miss a uh, dot right there. So a lot of times you'll see the unit being used in place of the decimal point. So 5V1 and I have a 5.6 volt Zener, and this one's a lot easier to read, an 8.2 volt Zener diode. They're over here. They look like regular little glass uh, diodes, like that, for the most part. They do have their part number written on them. It is written like this. So the one at the bottom there, it does say 8V2 on there, but you got to get really close to read it. It really helps to have a loop like this. And uh, so this was a kit I got from uh, China, the one I just showed you. There's also this kit here, Joe Knows Electronics Kit. They have Zener diodes. So you can see the number written there, but then there's a part number. So that's it's Zener voltage. There's a part numbers there, and you have to find the bag with that part number. So someday I'll probably just write on black marker what the voltage is too. But in uh, any case, it's really nice that these bags actually have the voltage written on them. So let's... Uh, Continue and look at how they are used in a circuit. So you can see it is reverse bias. And so you need a power supply voltage that is higher than the Zener voltage. It is for when you want a signal or to power a load directly, but usually it's a signal of a certain voltage. And just like with the trim pot, it doesn't hold its voltage uh, very well under particular loads. It's best to have the Zener voltage go to a transistor or something where it can amplify the power of that voltage. But in any case, the main takeaway is a voltage is gonna build up because it's blocking current, and then once it gets to its Zener voltage, we have one of 5.1 volts, then current's gonna pass through the Zener diode as needed to hold that 5.1 volts. And so whatever is expecting 5.1 volts will pretty much be able to count on about 5.1 volts uh, getting there. So now here, I have a power supply and I have a, a trim pot set about halfway. And so that's 14 volts at the rail, the output is on. You can see that it plugs into the board. There's the black one, I got a jumper going to the board. The red one up here goes to the uh, jumper there to the board. And then I made a couple of jumpers so that when you power one rail, the other one has power. So we're dealing with 14 volts, trim pot set about halfway in that range. And so the trim pot gives you a fraction of the power source voltage. So we will look and see that we have about 14 volts in that range at the trim pot set about halfway, a little less than halfway. You can see it's just shy of seven volts right there. Now we're gonna go to the uh, power supply and uh, lower that voltage. So we saw it was seven. Let's go to a 10 and now we will uh, come back here. No current is flowing through there. That's why there, well, there's a trickle of current. But in any case, there's the voltage there, 10 volts. And again, we can look at the rail, 10 volts. And now it's not seven volts anymore. Now it is pretty much uh, spot on five volts. So in any case, we're gonna take the 5.1 volt Zener diode. And again, it is reverse bias, not forward bias. If it's forward bias, it's gonna conduct at about 0.7 volts, just like a regular diode. And you'll get a voltage buildup of about 0.7 volts. And uh, I find that uh, at least these ones I bought from China don't handle much current, a lot of current going through them. So I blew a few going forward bias. But there you can see it's just shy of 5.1 volts. It's Zener diode uh, voltage. Zener voltage. So let's go over here and raise this up. We'll go again to 14 volts and now it is set and uh, we'll come back here and look at the voltage 
that we get here. It should be pretty much 5.1 volts. There is a higher voltage though at the rail, so more current's going through the resistor and the Zener diode. So its voltage drifts up a little bit, but there you can see it's holding 5.1 pretty well. Let's grab the 5.6 volt Zener diode. And so it's really just a release valve for uh, uh, voltage and uh, voltage and current. Now, again, we have that uh, 14 volts at the rail. And uh, so it's 5.8. And so I think this one's a little off. So these aren't uh, completely accurate, but uh, still, it's pretty close. And we will change the uh, voltage to uh, 10 volts right there come back and see if it's holding about the same right there again a little lower voltage a little less current going through the resistor it will be a tad bit lower but it holds uh, pretty true as long as the power supply voltage is above the Zener voltage and now here is the 8.2 volt Zener diode right there and we got 10 volts at the rail And there you can see, so that one looks a little shy. Maybe when we get up to 14 volts, it will make it up to 18.2. Uh, but uh, again, they're not 100% accurate. You're not gonna get the exact voltage most of the time. But uh, if you get the current just right through it and whatnot, you should get a pretty uh, reliable uh, voltage based on a Zener voltage. It's close, but it's not exact. But uh, it's uh, pretty simple and pretty useful right there, that Zener voltage. And that is how it is normally used as a release valve so that at uh, this node, it holds a voltage pretty well. And the less that the load demands, like I said, it's better to give it to a transistor so it can pass on that voltage to something else, like you do with the trim pot, the uh, more stable the voltage will be and you can keep a certain amount of current flowing through the Zener down so that it holds a specific voltage better but in case they were pretty good they're pretty simple right there and uh, as I showed you I have a bunch of them in my drone nose electronics kit so I post this a lot on uh, Twitter and stuff this kit but it has all these other components there and a bunch of uh, transistors there and stuff to play with and all that so I think it's worth the money for a easy assortment of semiconductors. So if you're going to buy them by yourself, uh, component by component, you'll probably save money. But uh, you get a wide assortment here, and still, it's not uh, terribly priced. You would still have to buy in bulk to save a lot more money than what you're buying here. So you'd end up spending more anyways. But in any case, these are good to experiment with. And if you like them, buy them or... Uh, similar ones uh, later on. So in any case, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.